What is up everybody? Welcome to the Game Night YouTube channel. In today's video, guys, this is going to be a special one, dudes. I'm going to show you guys the very first look at a Mint Tin dungeon crawler game that I have been designing over the past few months. And um, I'm making some progress on it here, guys. So this is going to be more of like a video diary, video journal type of video where I give you guys um, some details and information about the game and kind of bring you up to speed with where I'm at in the development of the game currently. So I've made some progress. There's still a ways to go. It's still in the like early prototyping phase. Let's say this is sort of like the alpha phase of the game development here, but um, it's coming along pretty nicely and I'm super excited about it. Like I said, it is going to be a dungeon crawler game. It's going to fit inside of a mint tin. I've been very inspired by a lot of the mint tin games that I've been playing lately. I was like, you know what? I want to try my hand at this and create my own Mint Tin game. And it has been an absolute blast creating this game. It's almost more fun creating the game than it is to play some of the games, honestly. <laughs> I'm finding it really, really enjoyable creating this game. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a dungeon crawler. You're gonna go into a dungeon. You're gonna have a character. It's gonna be a fantasy theme. Um, you know, what you what you know and love is gonna be like an old school D&D sort of fantasy vibe to it. Uh, you'll have different characters that you can pick with different skills and abilities different stats, you'll go into the dungeon. There will be um, pretty much what you expect in a dungeon crawler. There's gonna be monsters and enemies to fight. There's gonna be different bosses that you can fight depending on certain circumstances, which we'll get into. Um, there's different types of loot you can get. Uh, there's gonna be some different events that can happen. And um, I think a pretty unique way of uh, fitting a, a pretty jam-packed adventure inside of a tiny little tin like this. So like I said, it's still early days in the development. Um, so things could change. I could add things, some things could get removed. So don't take everything you see in this video as being set in stone, but it all started with this notebook right here, guys. So this is where I first started jotting down all of my notes and ideas for the game here. And a lot of things have changed, but it pretty much all started right here. So in the early days, I was thinking, you know what? It'd be kind of cool to have a system where there were cards that had one half of the card was a weapon and the other half was um, an armor. And like, if you had like, you know, a character, you could like overlay your character card over like your weapon if you drew that or over your armor. It was just something that I was kind of toying around with to fit more things on one card since you have to fit everything inside of a mint tin. Um, I ended up not using that. I don't think I'm going to use that idea, but that was like something I thought of early on. Then I started playing around with the idea of having um, individual map cards where you could actually uh, go through a dungeon and each card would be a map, like a piece of the map, and you would build the dungeon as you go. But I found that it got to be a little bit too much. As you can see here is like just some different notes I had written down about that. It started to kind of sprawl out all over the table and I wasn't really crazy about how that was going. Uh, it was just taking up way too much space. So I ended up simplifying things and I ended up changing things. But as you can see, yeah, there's just a bunch of notes in here. This is about how you encounter certain bosses. Um, originally, I was going to have it to where when you find a key, you draw one key at random. And then you, when you acquire three keys, you fight the boss that requires the color of the keys that you acquired. Um, so that was going to be that. But then I ended up settling for this. So when you defeat an enemy, you earn what's called soul fragments. Each enemy in the game will drop a certain number of soul fragments, and you can turn X amount of those fragments in to acquire one soul crystal. And essentially there are these little soul crystals that you're looking for, and depending on which colors you get, that will determine which boss you fight. And I'll show you that in a second, but those were the notes on that. Um, these were different rooms and the amounts of gold and treasure and food and enemies and stuff that I wanted to have in each of those rooms. So this was the original idea. Um, but yeah, I ended up abandoning that and I changed over to a different idea. Uh, these were the individual rooms, as you can see here, as mentioned, this is not, this is not relevant to the game anymore. So I, I did some designing of this and play tested this quite a bit at first, but like I said, it just, it sprawled out over the table too much. And I'm not a big fan of that. I really want to be able to have like a game mat for the game, the play mat, and uh, have everything nice and neat. And I couldn't do that with the way the game was before with the dungeon spreading out all over the place. So um, I tried to confine it to like a five by five area and I still just wasn't, I wasn't that happy with the way that was turning out. So I ended up switching gears. As you can see here, here's the five by five map that I'm talking about. 
Um, but yeah, it just, it ended up really not, not working out the way I wanted it to. I'm going to start working on designing some enemy cards. Um, I believe these were the, yeah, the early versions of them. And I'm doing something kind of different with this game. So, uh, you're going to roll a six-sided dice most of the time. And each of the enemies and your, uh, your main hero that you're playing and the weapons and things that you acquire, they're going to have three separate attack values. And so that's how the damage in the game is going to work. If you roll a one, two, a one, two, or three, it'll do a certain amount of damage. Like for instance, on this old version of the skeleton, if you roll a one, two, or a three, he'll do two damage. If you roll a four or a five, he'll do three damage. And if you roll a six, he does four damage. So um, the spread of damage isn't quite as big, which I think is good. You can I can kind of like narrow down how much I want each enemy to do. So instead of, you know, if you're fighting a rat and you roll 1d6 and he can hit you from 1 to 6 and then you fight a skeleton, you know, and he can hit you from 1 to 6. I just don't like how every single monster, if you just roll a, a d6, they can all do the same amount of damage. I mean, you can supplement the damage by adding uh, strength to them and buffing that damage, but I wanted to I wanted to make that even tighter and make each enemy feel even more unique in their damage output. And it allows me to go above six. So like if I wanted to, I could have like a bigger enemy deal even more than six damage if he rolls say a six for instance. So the way I'm looking at it too is, you know, from one to three, that's half of the numbers on a six sided die. So you have a 50% chance that you're gonna do like your lowest damage. And then from four to five, that's what, that's uh, one third. So you basically got a 33% chance that you're going to do your second amount of damage. And then you have about a, whatever it is, 16.5 or whatever percent chance to do the six, to do like the crit damage. So I think that's pretty cool too. It'll make it more impactful and more exciting when you do roll those bigger numbers and hit for your maximum damage. So that's the way the combat system is kind of working right now. Um, I'm really liking that. I've been play testing that a lot and it's been working out really well. Um, here were some weapon ideas or loot ideas. And you, as you can see, it's the same concept where if you roll a one, two, or three, four, or five, or six, it does three different types of damage. Um, and then I was playing around with the idea of having, and I still might do this, I might have a forge in the game where you can actually go to uh, upgrade your gear. I'm not dead set on it yet. Um, the game is actually pretty tough right now, so it needs something like that. I need to play test more and add something for the player to get that can help you get through the game because it's really difficult the way it is right now, which is good. I want it to be diff difficult. I don't want you to win every time. Um, I want it to be impactful when you win, but it's been been a little too hard. So that's something that I still might do is add the forge where you can upgrade armor and gear and stuff like that, but we'll see. I'm not totally sold on it just yet. Um, and then this is actually a current version of the enemy cards. So you've got the enemy name and obviously, <clears throat> you know, this is, this is not the finished product, guys, believe it or not. But this is basically the information that's going to be on the card. You're going to have the name of the enemy. And these are all kind of like placeholders for right now. They're sort of like generic things. But I think I want to make them a little bit more unique once I actually, you know, get to like the end stages of the game. But just as like placeholders to play test the game and whatnot and have some names on the cards. It's kind of generic stuff. So you got a skeleton, you got a rat, you got a spider. You got a zombie. It almost sounds like we're playing Minecraft, basically. But um, yeah, just kind of generic, you know, D&D &D fantasy type monsters that you would come across. But we'll make these a little more unique when it's all said and done. But yeah, so you got the name. So you got skeleton. Then you've got an amount of XP that they're going to give you. Because you're also going to have experience points in the game to level up your character. So in this case, he'll give you two experience points. And then you'll drop a certain number of soul fragments. In this case, it's two. And the way I'm playing the game right now, the current rules are... You combine five soul fragments at a shrine. You can find shrines in certain places in the dungeon. And you combine five of your soul fragments and that will equate to one soul crystal. So you combine soul fragments to turn them into soul crystals at shrines. And there are four different soul crystals and I'll show you those in just a little bit. Um, and then underneath here, this is an armor class. I also had in this little circle right here, a combat skill but I think I'm going to cut that out of the game, at least for now. It just seemed to kind of make it a little over overcomplicated and too many numbers, too much, a little too much going on, but I'm, I'm not sure yet. I might bring it back, but I wanted to simplify it a little bit. But 
uh, your hero and all of the enemies are going to have an armor class. So that's kind of similar to Dungeons and Dragons. So in this game, you're going to have to roll equal to or higher than the armor class of the enemy that you're fighting. So in order to hit a skeleton before you can even hit them, you have to roll a d6 and you have to roll a three or higher to hit them. So that's pretty cool because uh, it's not like you're just going to hit things every single time you go to attack. Um, certain enemies are going to be easier to hit and, and be more squishy and have a lower armor class and certain enemies will be a little bit more tanky and it'll be hard or, or more nimble and agile and it's going to be harder to hit them. Um, and then moving down to here, I've already explained this. This is the damage that he will do if he rolls a 1 to 3, a 4 to 5, or a 6. And at the bottom, there are these six little icons right here that denote his, uh, his stats. So you've got a heart that shows his health. You've got a little shield symbol that's going to show how much armor he has, which is how much damage he's going to mitigate if he does take damage. you got this little diamond symbol, which is going to signify his strength. That's how much extra damage he's going to do on top of whatever damage he rolls. He also has an initiative or a speed, which is signified by this little lightning bolt. This is going to show who attacks first in combat. If the enemy has equal to or higher than the player's speed, the enemy will attack first in combat. Uh, the circle here denotes how much gold the enemy will drop. And this little diamond shape symbol right here denotes how much treasure or loot the enemy will drop and what type and what quantity. So in this case for the skeleton, the green loot is common loot. Uh, there's also uncommon loot, which is colored yellow, and there's rare loot, which is colored red. And this skeleton will drop one common loot whenever you defeat him. So that's all the icons and statistics on the enemy cards up to this point. Uh, as mentioned, there's a rat, a spider, a zombie. Uh, there's an ooze, a goblin, a ghost, a mage, a banshee, a demon, a troll, and an orc, and as of right now, the demon is the hardest enemy in the game, followed by the troll. Uh, yeah, the demon is pretty dang tough. And also, I'm going to add some abilities to these enemies. I haven't added any sort of like special text abilities to the enemies yet. Some of them do special things. For instance, like the mage can burn you, uh, the ghost can cause fear, uh, the ooze can poison you. So there are some special things that they can do, but... I might add some text to them as well, uh, just to kind of spice them up and make them a little bit more unique. And going past that, I've got kind of like a layout for a character here. Um, this is more of an older, older layout for the characters, but they're going to have different stats as well, similar to the enemy's health, armor, strength, uh, initiative, or speed. You'll have a stamina um, meter as well that you can use to inflict more damage to enemies. I'll show you guys that. You'll have a food or rations meter. Also oil, which is important. One of the key aspects of this game is that you're going to have a lantern because you're going down into a dungeon. The dungeon's not going to be lit up. It's going to be dark down there in the dungeon. And you're going to need your lantern to stay lit as you're moving about through the dungeon. So you're going to have to acquire oil to keep your lamp lit while you're down there. Um, I was playing around with the idea of having mana. I'm going to cut that out. I'm not going to use that. Um, you are going to have an XP meter because you're going to be able to gain experience points in order to level up. And you'll have a fear meter as well, um, which is going to be sort of like a second health meter. Whenever your fear meter reaches 10, you pretty much go insane down in the dungeon. And um, I'll show you guys how that can happen. Well, one of the ways it can happen is from the ghost, as mentioned. And another way it can happen is if your lantern uh, runs out of oil and you're in the dark for too long, you'll end up uh, acquiring enough fear to where you'll go insane. And that's another way to lose the game, as is losing all of your health. Um, and then each of the, um, each of the uh, guys that you play as, each of the heroes is going to have a class and each class is going to have three different skills that you can get as you're leveling up. So you'll acquire XP in order to level up and when you level up it'll unlock another skill and each of the classes will have three unique abilities and I kind of jotted them down over here. This is just some working ideas that I have right now. The wizard will get fireball, lightning bolt, and Blizzard, and then for instance, the Warrior will have Fury, Adrenaline, Rush, and Bloodlust, and then there's going to be a Rogue, a Ranger, um, I think I'm going to cut out the Druid, and then there's going to be a Necromancer and a Cleric, so there's going to be six different classes, as well as six different races that you can play as in the game. Um, and then moving on over to here, I've got, uh, this is a map card idea, and this is actually where I've landed currently on how I want uh, the map cards to be. So rather than being like how it was earlier with these big map cards, where were those? 
yeah, instead of having these like big map cards that you would lay out cards individually and build a map on the table, the entire map will be confined to one card and you will have all of that on there. Um, and I'll get into all that in just a moment. So that's some of the ideas that I had for that right there. And uh, that's pretty much getting close to the end of it here. Here's some more stuff for enemies. Um, here's a shop card right here. So yeah, so that's all the stuff that I've got in the book so far. I'll set that off to the side and then um, we'll get into the cards in just a second. This is sort of like a makeshift uh, tracker that I have right here to keep track of your health, your fear, your oil, your food, your gold, your experience points, your, um, uh, your stamina here, your footsteps that you've taken in the dungeon, and your soul fragments. It's a lot. There's a lot of things to keep track of in the game, but um, I I've played through it quite a few times recently, and it's like it becomes second nature. It doesn't feel overwhelming at all. Everything is is necessary, and it feels good. It feels like there's a lot of content in the game. Um, so yeah, it's like that's a little makeshift um, tracker card for right now that I'm using. And now let's actually get into the cards and the tin itself. So everything that's on these cards right here is going to be on miniature cards, maybe except for the map cards. I'll probably make these on mint tin sized cards, like the rounded, you know, edged or cornered cards for the mint tin, because I want those to be a little bit bigger. But most of the other stuff, like the enemies and uh, the weapons and, and items and all that kind of stuff is going to be on these little mini cards right here. So I've just have, I have some blank ones in here right now. I just wanted to see how everything's gonna fit inside the tin. And that's pretty much what it's gonna look like. And um, I'm pretty sure it's all going to fit if you sleeve these cards as well. So uh, that's something really important to me because I love to sleeve my games. So I wanted to make sure that that was going to be an option as well for the game. So I'll go ahead and dump out all the contents right here. And keep in mind, this is subject to change, right? Like this might not be, probably won't be the final version of the game here. But let's see. If we get that out. One more. Okay. Cool. So there's a bunch of little things you get. There's... Two um, like medium sized, there went one of them, but there's two medium sized <laughs> six sided dice. I'm not even gonna go look for that. I'll get it after the video. There's two of these. Um, you might only even need one to be honest with you. Um, and then there's a bunch of these, there's 10 actually right now, of these little miniature six sided dice. As you can see it right here. Got a bunch of those, they're freaking adorable. I love these, so you use these to Keep track of different things like the enemy's health, like, um, you know, or if they have like armor and whatnot, or like the orc right here. He's got seven health, so you could put the dice on him like that to keep track of his health. And then when you hit him, you know, you just, you know, you know how it works. So yeah, you use these to keep track of uh, all the little stats and whatnot on the enemy cards right there. So you've got those. And then you've also got a bunch of little cubes. So all of these cubes are gonna be used to track different things in the game. So let me separate these real quick. You've got 10 of these blue ones. Got a red one, got a magenta one, you got a yellow one, got green, you got a gold one, got a couple of black colored ones. I need to get a couple other colors too. I wanna to get like orange and maybe like a clear or a white one because um, I don't want to have any of the colors doubled up, but it's just what I have to work with for now. And then I also have a second magenta. And like I said, I want to change the change the color of that one too. I'll probably get orange or white for that one. Um, then you have a little meeple here. Uh, this is going to be like your little dude, your little hero that's moving around through the dungeon. And then you've got these four uh, crystals. So these are the soul crystals that you're trying to acquire in order to fight the boss. So you're trying to acquire three of these soul crystals and depending on which colors you get is going to is going to determine which boss you fight so there's four different bosses to fight in the game so for instance if you get the topaz sapphire and ruby you'll fight a particular boss if you get the uh, sapphire ruby and emerald you'll fight another boss and then so on and so forth you get topaz you, you get it there's there's four bosses in total that you can fight depending on which three of those you get so uh, those are those ones right there. Originally, I had five, and it equaled up to ten bosses, which is pretty cool. And I might do that, but it seemed maybe like it was a little too much. But I don't know. Maybe you know. Let me know. More might be better. I don't know. Sometimes less is better, but in this case, um, I feel like this is a, a good number. And then having four bosses, I can have double-sided cards, so I only need two cards, and that cuts down on space 
inside the tin rather than needing five double-sided cards it cuts it down to two so it, that's another thing too a lot of things had to be kind of tweaked and changed to make uh to have enough space inside of the tin and then you've got uh these blue cubes one is a tracker and the other ones are used to track which rooms you've already been in in the dungeon which is important because if you re-enter a room it's not going to re-trigger the events and things that are in the room it'll only happen that one time but you have to keep track of it for uh to keep track of how many footsteps you've taken because that determines when your oil goes down and your lantern burns out so that's something that you keep track of with these little cubes right here so those are all the little components that are going to be included in the game set those over this way i like how colorful it is too especially with all the little soul crystals i like how there's different colors for those and then we'll get into the actual cards so these right here are the enemy cards but i've actually redesigned the enemies and i'll show you again in the book so as you can see i've got their six different stats down here but they're like doubled up like three across and then three across and i actually changed that so let's see if i can find it I changed that so that all of the stats are along the bottom of the cards. Like you can see here, like all the stats that I showed you guys a little while ago, they're all in a row, all six of them along the bottom of the card. And that's important because, um, well, I'll show you in a moment. I'll set this off to the side here. So these are kind of obsolete right now. These uh, double-sided enemy cards, there's going to be 12 enemies in total in the game, six cards double-sided. Um, six sort of like, you know, easier to medium ones, and then six medium to hard enemies. Uh, so we have like a kind of progression through easy to tough enemies. And yeah, these cards right now are actually obsolete. I need to make some new prototypes for these. So I haven't been using those, just been using the illustrations in the book when I've been play testing. Um, and then I've been playing just as one character to kind of uh, play test the game from like a base point, And then I can go ahead and make the other adventures, the other heroes and tweak things as I go. But the way it is right now is we've have I have a human and I'm playing a human warrior um, who gets his three different abilities as he levels up. When he gains five experience points, he unlocks his fury ability, um, which says when an enemy inflicts damage to you, your next attack inflicts plus one damage. So you know you get kind of pissed off when you get hit and you go into a fury. Um, when you hit eleven experience points, you unlock your next skill, which is adrenaline rush. Once per battle, you may spend stamina to inflict two damage per stamina spent, a maximum of two. Normally you can spend one stamina uh, to deal one extra damage to your roll, and you can spend up to three each time you roll. Uh, but with Adrenaline Rush, you can spend up to two and it does two damage. So you can do a little bit extra damage with Adrenaline Rush, and that might change. Um, I might change that even up to a maximum of three, but I have to do more play testing. And then last for the Warrior, when you hit 18 experience points, you get Bloodlust, which says when you roll a 6 to hit, like when you're rolling against their armor class, if you roll a 6, um, you get to attack again after dealing damage. So you go into a Bloodlust. So you can potentially do multiple attacks in a row if you get lucky enough. So I've been playing as a human warrior. It's been working out pretty well. Uh, here's a shop card. Um, I'll show you how that works in just a minute. That'll make more sense. And then as of right now, um, for the warrior, the human warrior, the starting equipment is a club. That's all that you're going to start with as of now, that might change. It probably will change. Um, I, I might have that the other characters start with different starting gear. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet because, again, it all has to fit inside of the tin. So I really have to prioritize certain things over others. But as of right now, you're starting with a club. It does one, two, or three damage. It's like the most basic weapon in the game. Um, and then there's different loot that you can get. And I'll show you how that loot system is working currently. So there are nine cards that are double sided and this gives me 18 um this gives me 18 different pieces of loot that i have to play with so if you divide that by three it's six so i have six commons six uncommon and six rare loot cards and here are all the current common cards all of this is subject to change it's pretty basic stuff but i kind of like the more basic old school D, D vibe to it um so you can get a dagger uh, this is the common loot you can get a short sword a short bow, a tunic, a buckler, and a potion. For the uncommons, you can find a helmet, chainmail, an amulet, uh, a shield, an axe, or a long sword. And for the rare loot, you can find a long bow, a magic ring, a plate mail, a rune, a warhammer, and a claymore. And as mentioned, these might change, but this is uh, this is what I've got for the game right now, and it's been working pretty well. 
So those are the loot. And then last but not least, I guess I'll set these up this way. Last but not least, this is probably my, my favorite part of the game. This is the driving core mechanic of the game. This is the dungeon slash resolution deck is at least what I'm calling it currently. So uh, on one side of the card, you've got these dungeon cards that have different rooms in them with these little symbols. And um, I'll explain that in just a moment. There's a bunch of them. There's 16 of these cards, as you can see right here. They all have different layouts on them. And on the back of the card is the resolution side of the card. So there's a lot going on on the back of these cards. Uh, they're multi-purpose cards. So on the top here, you'll see a little symbol up in the top corner. We'll get to that in a moment. You'll also, you probably recognize these symbols here. These are the six icons that are on the bottom of the um, enemy cards as seen here in the notebook. And essentially what this is for is depending on what level of the dungeon you are on, say you're on level one, and you come across a Banshee, for instance. If you're on level one, you would flip one card from the dungeon slash resolution deck over, and you would add these modifiers to these base stats for the enemy that you're fighting against. So for instance, in this situation, the Banshee would get plus one to its health for a total of seven, and it would get plus one to its strength for a total of two strengths. So if you're on level three of the dungeon, you would flip three of these cards and add those things to it. So in this case, He'd have eight health. He would also gain an armor and you'd gain one to his speed. So he'd be a little bit faster in combat. So it's going to, it's going to up the difficulty. The deeper you go, the deeper the level you are in the dungeon, it's going to be um, a more dynamic experience rather than um, just having static changes to the health or certain stats of the enemy. This will make it more dynamic. And every time you fight an enemy, it's going to be different. You might fight a super fast demon, or you might fight a troll with a bunch of armor, or you might fight an orc that's got a little bit more health and maybe a little bit more armor. There's all kinds of different variations. So you might get lucky and, and fight a troll that's gonna drop extra gold or extra loot. So there's different possibilities in here, which are really, really cool. Um, and it makes it more thematic. Like it's kind of neat to fight against a rat and it's got like, a, it's got like, you know, really high speed or so it's like, like little, just like crackling rats that are like zipping all over the place. It just adds like, you know, some, um, some different flavor to the game, which I think is pretty cool. And then also on the back of these resolution cards, you'll see that there's these three lines of text with these symbols next to them. And you have a circle, a triangle, and a, uh, a diamond right here. And that corresponds to the map cards here. So as you can see, they have the same symbols. You got the green circle, the yellow triangle, and the red diamond. So the green circle rooms are like easy rooms. Um, whenever you enter one of these rooms, say for instance, you have your little meeple and the S right now is going to be like the stairs where you enter, you enter through here and we're in a room that has a green circle. You would take the next card of the dungeon deck and you'd flip it over and then you'd see what the green circle is. So in this room, there would be a zombie and a food inside of that room and you would do those in order. You could fight the zombie and then pick up the food. If you were to move into, say, this room with the triangle and you ended up flipping over the same card, well, now there's a completely different set of circumstances. There's a skeleton in this room and a gold. So that makes it to where there's a bunch of different possibilities of things that you can run into depending on what the symbol is in the room that you happen to go in. And it adds three different unique possibilities to the back of each of these 16 cards. And I believe that is 40 eight different possibilities that you can run into. Um, so it makes it very varied and it, you know, it makes it feel different each time you play because there's so many different things that can happen depending on where you go. And then there's also a push your luck element to the game. I'm obviously very inspired by Jason Glover's games. I've been playing Tin Helm and Iron Helm and all that kind of stuff on the channel for a while. So I wanted to kind of um, put my own spin on it because it's just such a fun mechanic, but obviously I don't want to rip him off by any means. But I'm inspired by it. I even remember watching a video that he put out fairly recently talking about um, sort of like the ethics of, you know, like borrowing ideas from other games. And, um, you know, and he's kind of on board with that too. As long as you're not just straight up ripping people off and you're inspired by it. It's kind of like that with music or all art, really. We're all just inspired and kind of standing on the shoulders of giants. So it's similar with this. So my version of the push your luck mechanic in this game is that say... Uh, same, same thing. Say you enter this room of the dungeon 
and there are actually, let's say you enter this room down here with the red diamond. So that's going to be like the really gnarly rooms where like tough things can happen or you can find the most reward there too. So let's say, you know, we're going through, we enter that room and we flip over the card and we have to fight a ghost. Now a ghost is a pretty tough enemy. That's a pretty, uh, pretty formidable foe there. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to fight the ghost. I'm going to push my luck and try to resolve a different outcome. Because when you go in the room, this is sort of like, I kind of think of it like, it's like quantum physics or something. It's like, this hasn't actually like manifested yet. It's when you decide that, yeah, this is the, this is the action that I want to actually resolve. That's what happens in the room. So if you're like, you know what? No, I don't want that to happen. I want to push my luck. You can push your luck one time each time you enter a room. And instead of doing that, you flip over the next card and you look at the symbol in the top left corner of the card. And then you have to do whatever uh, whatever outcome it is for that symbol. So in this case, it's a diamond. And this will be colored too. It's a red diamond. So we'd have to fight a banshee. So we didn't get very lucky there. Let's see if we could get something different. This is a perfect example. So you'll notice there's circle, triangle, and diamond but some of these cards will have a star in the top left corner. And that is so when you enter a hard room, or a red diamond room, which is like a harder room, that there's a chance that if you push your luck, you could face something even worse that you wouldn't ever face by just entering the room. In this case, it's actually a good thing. This is like the best thing that you can find in the game. You would get a gold, a food, an oil, and a rare loot. So that's like the luckiest, best thing that you can get in the game. But sometimes you'll flip and you'll end up, let's see, like this. If we tried to push our luck in this room, we didn't want to do that, and we flip this one, and it's got the star, you look down here, you'd have to fight a demon, which is horrible, terrible. So, Or sometimes you could get lucky. Let's see if we can actually get lucky and flip one. So yeah, in this case, we'd flip this over, and we, we have the triangle up in the top. So you look at the triangle, one common loot. So we'd get a common loot. So when you push your luck, you can either get lucky and have a better outcome or fight a weaker enemy than what you would have had to originally, or you might get unlucky and have to fight something gnarlier or run into a trap or whatnot. So yeah, so that's how the push your luck mechanic is gonna work in the game. And then the last thing that's on the back of these resolution cards is this half down here. This is like an event that can possibly go off depending on what room you're in. So for instance, in the same example, if we were to move down into this red diamond hard room, um, there's a rare loot in here, which is awesome. But there's also an event that says haunted and it has the uh, the diamond symbol next to it, which means that it would activate since we're in the room with the red diamond. And it says the hair on the back of your neck rises. You feel like you're being watched, but there's no one else here or is there? And you'd roll a six sided dice and depending on what you roll, things are going to happen. In this case, bad things. If you roll a one, two, a three, you get plus one on your fear meter. If you roll a four to a five, you get plus two on your fear meter. And if you roll a six, you get plus three fear, you'd be super, super scared. Um, there's also a shrine in this room. I don't know if you can see it. I had to color it in with colored pencil. This is all pretty crude as of right now, guys, but um, uh, four of the rooms, or three of the rooms rather, are gonna have shrines in them, and that's where you combine your soul fragments to turn them into soul crystals, and you'll draw one of the soul crystals at random. The way I've been doing it is I just mix them up in my hand without looking, and then pick one out that seems to be the simplest, most elegant solution to that. So that's how I've been doing that. Uh, so yeah, those rooms will have shrines in them sometimes. So you're kind of trying to look out for the shrines so that you can combine your fragments, get the crystals, summon the boss, hopefully defeat them, and then make it out of the dungeon. So those are all the different things. And there's some good things that can happen too. Um, like there's a, an abandoned camp, for instance, on this one. So let's say you move into a green circle room and you were to flip this resolution card over, there would be a zombie and a food in the room. Let's say we choose to do that and not push our luck. We end up killing the zombie. We pick up our food. And then there's also this. So since we're in the green circle room, the green circle is the abandoned camp. So this event would go off. A ring of stones surrounds burnt logs and ashes. A bed of hay lays nearby and a leather bag leans against a stone. So you can actually go ahead and loot the area. If you roll a one, two, a three, you get plus one oil. If you roll a four to a five, you find an oil and a food. And if you roll a six, you find a food and two pieces of gold. So those are all the uh, the statistics or the, the different uh, pieces of the back of the resolution cards here. And as mentioned, the front is just all of these different uh, layouts for the dungeon. And you'll notice too, on all of these dungeon map cards here, there's a key. 
So on all of these, there's a key somewhere on the map card. And what you're gonna have to do is when you enter that level, because each one of these map cards represents one level, you'll enter the level and then you have to make your way to the key in order to make your way and unlock the exit. You can't escape the level until you get the key and then go over to the exit, which is signified by these little uh, this little hallway going off the side of the card. Obviously in the final version, it'll be much more obvious where the door is that you need to unlock to get out of each level of the dungeon. But yeah, that's it. So you just keep going, venturing deeper into the dungeon, uh, getting the keys, going in the rooms, fighting things, looting things, going through all these different uh, unique events. And um, yeah, you're trying to uh, turn in all your soul fragments to get these soul crystals so that you can fight a boss and defeat the boss and get out of the dungeon. So pretty basic idea. It's nothing overly groundbreaking. It's pretty much how dungeon crawlers go. You're just looting and fighting enemies and fighting bosses. And yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make just a, a very classic fantasy themed dungeon crawler game. And um, I'm doing it, guys. I'm really loving the way it's coming out. It is super, super fun. I'm currently uploading uh, the images and things to um, Tabletop Simulator, and I'm going to have uh, some people play test the game for me and give me their feedback. And um, if you're interested in that, let me know down in the comments below. And um, yeah, I can you know hook up with you and get you uh, get you playing the game on Tabletop Simulator if you're interested in play testing the game and let me know what you think. So I've gone on long enough. Uh, yeah, this video is pushing 40 minutes right now, guys. So, hey, if you are still here, thank you so much for your interest in the game. Uh, it is yet to be named. I was thinking about calling it Dungeon Quest. That was a name that I've been having in my mind for quite a while. Um, but then uh, I saw Jason Glover is coming out with his brand new game called UnderQuest. And I was like, Dungeon Quest, Under it's a little too similar. So, <laughs> um, and to be fair, I came up with the name before I even knew about UnderQuest. But, yeah, so I think I might change it. I'm not too sure. Let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know what you think about the game so far, if it looks cool to you, uh, if you have any suggestions or anything like that, or, uh, you know, just any advice that you have or, or feedback is very much appreciated. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. Oh, one last thing I should mention too. I forgot the little shop card was under here. Um, this will determine depending on what room you're in, uh, what, what like shelf of the shop you can buy items from. So if you got the green, if you're in a green room, for instance, and you find a shop, you can buy things from the top shelf, so on and so forth. So yeah, you got a little shop card right there too, but it's kind of an afterthought, um, but a neat little addition to the game right there. So anyways, guys, like I said, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, uh, be sure to hit the thumbs up like button if you liked the video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell icon so you can stay notified every time I upload a brand new video and I'm gonna be uploading more videos like this of progress on this Mint Tin Dungeon Crawler game that I'm making, guys. So be on the lookout for that and uh, yeah, like I said, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think of the game so far, if you're excited about it, and uh, definitely hit me up if you're interested in play testing the game. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, appreciate all the support, dudes. I got more videos coming out. I've uh, been catching up on some stuff. So yeah, look out for that in the near future. Got more playthrough videos and stuff coming your way. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate all you do so much. And until next time, have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next video.